everybody, it's Brad here today and welcome back to Project Hospital. I'm excited, I've been playing so much of this in my spare time. The theme tune gets me going, does anyone else like? When you load in the game, just have a little have a little head nod to the theme tune. Ba -ba -dum, ba -dum. Don't know what it is about it, but I just love it. So I've been working a little bit in between episodes, guys, just doing a few little things. Nothing crazy, it's been a while, so let me just try and remember. I've had to expand high dependency unit for general surgery. So I've just popped this going around the corner, made these rooms a little bit bigger. I think I've done that in between episodes. Did I do this in between episodes, like more diagnostic rooms, common room here. And then this room was a diagnostic room, but I've just changed that into like a little nurse's station with a few nurses that will do transport. Because uh, we were running out of nurses to wheel our lovely, I was going to say passengers, they're not passengers, they're patient spreaders um, around our hospital. And then also we've got two sonography units over here. These are owned by radiology, so these can be used by any department um, and it's really, really handy when coming to diagnose patients. If you're having troubles in your hospital diagnosing patients, I really would um, invest in sonography. That's about it, I think. I might have done a bit of expansion in ICU. Obviously, that just happens. And I have got the little cleaner man here. He's the boss of janitor's man. Yeah, words. Words aren't happening for me. Um, so, yeah, other than that, it's been fairly quiet, really. I've actually been playing this save on another saved file, like a lot. So like we have like a few departments in that one. So what I want to do is at the end, once we've finished this hospital, is we can compare and like see how things diverged between the let's play and me just playing it in my own time. Well, that would be quite a cool idea. Anyway, so what shall we do today? Um, so we've got an objective here of treating 90 patients per day. That will give us next intern available for hire will be a great candidate. That's always good. After that will be a treat 100 patients per day, which gives you $50,000. We've got no loan. We've got loads of money. We're actually sitting fairly pretty, aren't we? Okay, and what else is happening with other insurance objectives? Okay, so we could go quick snap care. This gives you objectives like um, doing the event buttons, uh, you know, like do three epidemic events in a row, for example. We could create our own doctor with the character editor. That costs $10,000. However, it does open up Oopsie Corp, uh, which has some fairly cool objectives for insurance really um, you have to like treat a certain amount of patients on doctor mode in different difficulties it's actually quite fun but i think for the moment let's just have a little scout around so yeah i've had to extend high dependency unit here um what i actually done in my other hospitals i actually moved operating theater upstairs and i have two of the dedicated teams that's quite handy to have so we could possibly look at that but at the moment, it's actually quite quiet. So let's have a look around general surgery. So we've actually only got two people here in our regular ward. Three, sorry. So um, Robert Young here is actually still due for his surgery. No, he's actually had a surgery done, sorry. So he just needs some aftercare. Richard Cole here. Let's just give him all of these if he's hospitalised. He's got... Uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome so the main kind of thing of that is just having a blood transfusion but we're going to give him all these other drugs just to make sure that he's nice and comfortable and yeah he's also got some other tests going on just to figure out these six hidden symptoms here uh, Robbie Young oh yeah that's why he's actually having his surgery done as we speak so that's that guy in that bed here and over in this section we've got Margaret Cole who's got duodenitis and it's, again, she's just going through some different drugs to cure her of that. And how are we going on in high dependency? Charles Jackson's got a renal contusion. Let's make sure that he gets everything that he needs. Charles Cole's had his surgery. Barbara White has 
has got her medication going, Joseph Hall. I just had to extend her dependency for this chap down here, Charles Jackson. It's turn eight o'clock. As soon as the game turns eight o'clock in the morning, all the law, well, not all of them, but um, if patients have been cured and they're in hospitalized rooms like the regular ward and HEU, they'll leave at eight o'clock in the morning. So it tends to where your bank balance becomes a lot healthier. Um, and also we've got more capacity here, so that's good. But I probably didn't need that extra room on the end. No matter, no matter. And then Joseph Hall down here, again, is just having a few things for his exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Oh, that's lots of words, isn't it? That's lots of words. Right, so I just want to check how are our lab's doing. This is always handy to look at. This shows you how many samples you've got in your queue. So we're good at the moment. In my other hospital, that is the same hospital, but just further along, I have actually segregated my labs into hospitalised and clinic patients. And that has helped, actually. That has helped. Um, because here at the moment, all these stuff do both. And you can see that because you've got both of these on for all of these scientists here. And for hospitalised patients, the lab techs need to go from here. You need to get in this elevator here, most likely. Come all the way down here if any of these guys need any lab tests and then go all the way back. So it can be a bit lengthy. So what I actually done is I built a floor up here and I popped in some medical labs just for hospitalized patients. And it actually worked quite well. It actually did work quite well, but it's fairly chill here today. It's actually fairly quiet. Uh, I want to monitor general surgery because it does quite quickly get to the point where you need kind of two operating theatres and quite a large regular ward, quite a large HDU. So I just want to make sure that we're all hunky-dory and everything's going well. But in the meantime, we need to try and treat 90 patients today. Um, so we'll come back down here in a minute into emergency and we'll make sure that we can do everything we can to treat these patients. Michael Hill, with your pancreas contusion. Let's give you some drugs. And let's just make sure we have enough nurses. Because it looks like, so we've got, we've got three there. These are all caring for patients. I mean, we should have enough, but this room is actually free. We've actually got four, because technically, even though these, we've tried to segregate these to be transporting patients around for surgery, you know, you can't specify that. So these also will be, transporting patients around so i think you're actually fine where's this was this this guy here no michael where are you oh so you need to go from here to general surgery let's see how long that takes i think he'll need i think the nurse comes from general surgery i think paul scott's collapsing he's got bacterial gastroenteritis so let's make sure that you get, so you've got your antibiotics, which is actually treating what you've been diagnosed with. But let's make sure you get rehydrated because you're severely dehydrated. And Paul, you should be okay. So I'm coming, yeah. It's just not that long, is it, Michael? Is it Michael? Yeah, stop your moaning. Bloody hell, you give people healthcare and they just, oh. You get, you're going to observation, aren't you? Why? Why does the game do this to me? So John, we know, has got hand contusion but because we haven't yet got orthopedia department. So we know it must be this diagnosis here. So he will get that and then he'll be on his merry way. But these are patients that we could quite quickly get out of our hospital and obviously, you know, quite quickly um, become treated, which helps with our insurance objectives. So winds me up guys it really does it winds me up anyway what i think i'm going to do which will actually help with this objective here is i think i'm going to come into our emergency department and i'm going to fire someone i am guys i'm going to fire someone who have we got that is a bit crap you're five yeah okay yeah 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 all one so you could go Charles, couldn't you? Get out of here, Charles. We don't like you anymore. Bye, Charles. 
Right, so now we're going to create a new character. We're going to... Hmm. For the moment, I'm going to call them Brad. Rad. And you guys are going to... What do I look like? Oh my Christ, no, I'm not that colour. Um, I thought that was hair. I am... I'm like a ghost. Yep, yeah, ghost and then that colour for my hair. Oh, that's quite more like more like that. I don't have a beard. Wish I did. I do wear glasses. Don't have wrinkles yet. Yeah, I've got green up. No. I've got green eyes. I thought that was eyes. Is this is that changing the colour or just like the shape? Don't really know. Don't really know what eyes I have. I have those, I think. Okay, right. Age, I... Oh, I wish I was 23. Right, so these are good perks here. So I think I'm going to select... Extra talent for diagnosis. And 20% bonus experience to diagnose a skill of a successful diagnosis. And then a bad perk here. I mean, there are some are bad and some are, like, okay. I guess slow learner, maybe. But that is going to be one of our objectives, is to train them so maybe i'll go for like rest levels decrease faster that's not too bad i don't think so let's create brad rad and if you want to be a doctor in this hospital or a nurse or a janitor or a lab tech or a receptionist anyone you want let me know down below so what we're going to do is we are so we have three out of four contracted companies so let's get oopsie corp in right so here, look, which controlled doctor's rating, 80%. So what we're going to do, let's go to those. We're going to go to doctor mode. Let's take control of Brad Rad. Just a selection. Oh, no, you've been fired, Charles. James, Frank, and Thomas, maybe. Well, that's quite a sausage fest, isn't it? Let's get in Elizabeth. And Margaret. Because in every good company, business, hospital, school, whatever you need, you need the ladies, guys. Honestly. Right. Need a bit of sanity. Let's go to that window. Oh, I've already done that. We've already done the diagnose. No, we've already, what was it? I've already forgotten what it was. Reach something, something of controlled doctors. So, Peter Foster here. Hello, Peter. So, we know it can't be broken ribs because that's orthopedy. So we know that you must have a chest contusion, sir. We're going to give you that and some emergency care. And then please leave our hospital. Oh, no. Nancy's collapsing. Nancy, no, you're not allowed to collapse. Let's rehydrate you. Use some other drugs. Now, we need to see what's wrong with you, don't we, Nancy? So we know it can't be internal medicine, these two. So appendicitis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, bacteria, gastroenteritis. So I think we should be doing like stool and microbial for you, Nancy, just to quickly find out whatever that microbe is that's causing you bother for, um, I think colitis is caused by some type of, no, it's not, is it? So gastroenteritis and Crohn's disease, no, no, I'm speaking utter horse poo here. Let's do CRP first. We'll put on a priority just to make sure she gets some good care. Right, Linda here's got bacterial tonsillitis, so you need some antibiotics, and then you can actually just go. I don't want to spend too much time finding out these other hidden symptoms, because we just need to treat 90 patients and also correctly diagnose 10 patients. So I don't want to spend too much time kind of like doing other things. I want patients to come in, get diagnosed and go home and look guys if they need to go home and they've got other things wrong with them they'll just have to come back and i'll get more money the next day Shh. kate moore's got laryngitis so she, we know that she just needs some antibiotics and she can be on her way susan johnson so these are some orthopedic diagnoses here so we know that susan johnson must have golfer's elbow golfer's elbow is horrible um I know how that feels, although, touch wood, I haven't had it in a long time, which is good, because it bloody hurts. It's really horrible. 
Rich has got chicken pox. It's good you've got now, Richard. You don't want shingles now, do you? Peter Foster here can go home. We've said that he's got chest contusion. That's all good. Oh, an intern mode. Poo bums. Poo bums. I did not see that. Intern mode. No hints in diagnostics. Ah. I never really knew what that done, but okay. So here, if we have it off, it suggests us, because we know it's something to do with Peter's chest, we knew that it'd probably be a good idea to do like an X-ray of his chest or differential diagnosis. If you turn this on, it just gives you all of the tests. Cool. I was, I think the other day I was trying to see what he was actually doing and obviously I was being a bit blind. Um, okay, right, so on intern mode. So now it will actually count towards this objective, Brad. You silly little duck. Right, Linda Cole here. We know that she must have hand contusion because it can't be this one because this one's the orthopedic department. So hand contusion, numbing ointment, okay, go home. Yeah, one out of ten, here we go. James Allen has got iron deficiency anemia, so he needs some iron supplements. And drink some Guinness, James, drink some Guinness, have some kale. Right, Jessica Lee here. Lots of orthopedic diagnoses and a few emergency. Leg contusion, foot contusion, arm contusion. That is quite strange, Jessica, because um, you've had an interview and you've had a triage at reception. So are you unsure where your bruise is? I feel like it could be quite easily figured out where your bruise is, Jessica, by looking at your body. Um, Joseph Adams here has a pork tapeworm. That does not sound good, does it? That's, that's not a good Sunday. Right, Jessica Lee, are you who we just looked at? You are. Physical exam has showed us nothing. <sighs> That's impressive, isn't it? I think all these are interview physical exam, aren't they? Right, so you are going to have to go for an x-ray. Let's do upper limb. Because that will show us arm. Oh, yeah. So let's do upper limb and lower limb. And if this shows us that there's no bruising there, it must be chest. Does that make sense? I think, I think so. I think so. Maybe not, but I think so. Let's just put my camera over here so you can see the hospital. Oh my lord, look how busy it is over here. Right, let's just pop another workstation in our emergency reception. I think these are black stores. So how's general surgery? We've got, okay, one day, one night. That should be fine. We need some more for our emergency. Robert Green's pretty good. He's got a resistance, which is good. Someone in the night shift. Well, let's do Mary. And then what we'll do is we'll swap her. And then here I should be able to go Robert. Yeah, there we go. She's more efficient in the day. So it makes sense for her to be popping around in the day. And then I'll zoom out and then we can just see how busy we get here. Right. No, 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 no. Don't unpause. Christopher Martin. Hello, sir. Could be literally anything. So let's go for physical exam. Let's have a little feel of his tummy. And we'll make sure his chest is okay. Daniel right here. We know he must have scoliosis because I believe these two are orthopedic. So you, sir, need some exercise. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Um, Thomas Walker. Again, not sure. It does look like it could be something microbial, parasitical. Parasit? No, parasitical. Parasit? Pa no, I'm just going to stop. I am just going to stop. Thomas will do some basic tests on Thomas. Casey Clark has pharyngitis. He needs some non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. And he can go home. Christopher Martin, we just saw you, didn't we? Right. So we know it can't be any of these green departments because we haven't got them. So it must be sinusitis, pharyngitis, or bacterial tonsillitis. So let's do a laryngoscopy, nasal cavity inspection, oral cavity inspection on Christopher Martin. Isn't that the guy who's the lead singer of Coldplay? I think he looks a bit different, but he's from Exeter. He's from Exeter. Dana Martin, hello, hello, hello. She's got primary peritonitis. Ooh. 
Bacterial infection at Periton AM, that doesn't sound good, does it? Left untreated, the condition is almost always fatal. So what do you do, just take it out? It's abdominal surgery. Oh, Dana. I don't envy you, my friend. Right, let's get you in HGU, regular. Let's go regular. And then hopefully they'll do some more tests on Dana as well, just to figure out these other symptoms. Susan Jackson, we know that you can't have amoebio amoebiasis. So is that like a, what is that? Uh, oh, is it an amoeba? That's it's quite cool, but probably not cool if you have it. Um, lactose intolerance or Crohn's disease. What are some easy tests to rule out lactose? Abdominal palpitation. Let's just do that and just see if we can rule out lactose intolerance. Thomas Walker, we've had a little feel of, of his belly and we can say that he's got hay fever, which is antihistamines. He can go home. Okay, who's next? Susan Jackson, hello. So you do have lactose intolerance, so let's get you some diet modification plans in. You can go home nice and easy. Okay, Nancy Clark is gonna be an easy one. We have none of those departments other than general surgery. So we know that she must be suffering from pancreatitis. So we're going to want to transfer you over to general surgery, give some IV antibiotics, let you stay in for the night and make sure you are all good. Jessica right here, so we know it must be one of these general surgery things. Again, I think we're going to need to do physical abdomen palpitation and I think we're going to need to start looking at CRP and then do some tests like blood and microbial blood draw microbial we'll also do a stool test as well and that'll be all good for jessica fraser king here could have any of these diagnoses so that's just some basic tests physical exam basic visual tests because that's got something to do with insomnia hasn't it evaluation oh okay so let's do speech listening Let's scroll down and find evaluation, see if we can diagnose Fraser. We need to diagnose one more patient and we've done our first objective for Oopsicorp, so that'll be great. Here we go. Uh, Christopher Martin, the lead singer of Coldplay. He's not going to fix you, he's going to be fixed by a doctor. Antibiotics, that was perhaps the worst joke I've ever told in my life. That's got $50,000, okay, awesome. So Chris, you can go home. So now we need to treat 20 patients, so not diagnose, treat 20 patients in doctor mode. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this. I'm just going to close doctor mode. We've done a little bit of it already. and I don't want to completely saturate you guys with doctor mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to one time speed. Okay, so where are these doctors? Where are you, Will? You've gone to my where are you? what you're going out to this cafeteria okay that's fine probably would have been quicker to have gone in this elevator rather than i think what you've done is go over here i don't know if there's capacity to elevators like i don't know if i get in another one here does that mean more staff or like you know like you have better capacity should we just do it they're not overly expensive are they so let's do that. I'm going to go for our kind of beigey brown corridor look. We have also got that going on inside the elevator. So let's just make sure that's all good. We've got a little bit more to do there. And then this out here needs to be brick. I did notice that I was missing some. That needs to be. Oh no, it's not that one that one I was noticing that I've missed a few bits of brick here and there here not very good at this am I missing it all over the shop okay I think I'll be good for a minute cool so I just wonder oh yeah I need to do this floor as well of course do that spin round there we go Pop in this floor. Make sure this is a corridor. 
So, and I've also, did I do that in the last episode? I don't, this is the only problem. I don't know what I've done in the last episode and between episodes. I've also just kind of like, not extended, but I've built another little reception area for when we get new departments. I am going to make sure actually that we've got enough receptionists for general search. Dana, Daniel, you're both pretty good. So I just wonder if this will mean that more, you know, we've got a higher capacity of people going up and down maybe. Not really sure, I've not tested it. Okay, pharmacy's busy, that's good. Our radiology rooms over here are good. Got Joseph Cole here, not sure what's going on with Joseph. He's got a blood draw going on, that's good. I think it'll be good to get stool analysis going on for Joseph. I know like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, lax intolerance, I think can be aided in diagnosis by a stool test. You've got an ankle contusion, so Casey, you can pretty much go. Mary right here, we know that she must have iron deficiency anemia. So we haven't got those departments, so she can get her test done. Can you, um, can't you somewhere display workplace background color? Display workplace background color. Oh. Running background. Always daylight and building mode, that's handy. Um, anyway, I'm not looking at that, I'm not looking at that. Um, what I wanted to see is, isn't there summer where you can change the diagnosis type? Oh, that's cool, I didn't know you could do that. Isn't that somewhere, is it here maybe? And you can be like, you can change the, oh, what words am I trying to say? You can change like how easy it is for doctors to diagnose people. Have I messed that up? I've said really random words, haven't I? I'm sure that's somewhere. Don't know. Let me know guys, isn't there somewhere we can be like, to diagnose a, a patient you have to be certain or like not very certain isn't that somewhere but i can't remember where oh he's actually depressed <sighs> it's not good is it i thought it was in here oh here i'm so blind right certainty low medium high set up a value of certainty which we use to confirm diagnosis so default is medium. So I guess if we have it on high, they'll like always do like lab tests, radiology tests, which are expensive, but I guess prove the certainty of the diagnosis, right? Let's leave it on medium for a minute. Sorry, that was probably very painful trying to watch me find that. My apologies. So we are gonna actually have 46 patients come today. So we could actually treat 90. It could be fairly easy to treat 90 patients today. I'm just doing a little scout of the hospital, really, just seeing what's going on. Where are you popping off to? You've got that ankle contusion, haven't you? No problem. Did we get janitors? Did I get janitors in for our cleaning closet over here? Yeah. So these are all... Oh, you get someone in a night shift. This room does not allow hiring for night shift. Okay. But these guys here are all under the admin department, so they will, like, clean... I think they clean wherever in the hospital I, is what I assume. How's the ICU? Because of my other save game of this hospital, the ICU is getting quite grubby. So I am tempted to do something like, if I just want a day shift and a night shift, Okay, I could do that. Then I could come down here and say, Carol, you're going to go here. You you now work for the intensive care department, Carol. And you should have a colleague. Hmm. Can I see it here? Jane Young. So Jane Young, 
you need oh no oh wait wait what KC okay KC you are coming in here and you're gonna focus on cleaning my intensive care unit please thank you very much we have got someone in intensive care actually oh yes yeah, Paul Scott I remember him he was not having a good time he was not having a good time cool well, it's all going fairly swimmingly really it's just got to treat a load of patients haven't we what's going on with you Linda Green you can go home I like those when you can just be like go home uh, you've got chicken pox antivirals and you can go home Paul Elizabeth here not sure what's wrong with Elizabeth yet oh yes we are it must be sinusitis there you go and Elizabeth can go home once she's had her medication anyone in general surgery clinics got something in the lounge that's cute Joseph Cole you've got lactose intolerance so we know you just need some diet modification oh, that's cool it just says like who she's visiting she's visiting Robert Young cool she's an accountant oh she's an accountant doesn't that mean something these days anyway I'm gonna shut up no one's in the clinic at the moment yeah it's fairly quiet really isn't it I was also going around and making sure that every common room has a fridge because I know that the staff get fairly angry if they can't access food dirt I don't like dirt but I think they do yeah and they've got a cafeteria as well is this another fridge is it hiding well yes yeah, hiding there um, so the only thing I've thought of is possibly adding a common room up here because if you're a doctor here you've got quite a long way to go to the nearest common room but when I'd done that what was quite annoying is we were having quite a lot of people come to this common room from like you know like a nurse up here and it's like well just go there like just go there why have you got to come all the way down here to this one that's really annoying me how are we doing for surgeries We've just got David Martin at the minute. Let's make sure he gets his other drugs there. So it's fairly steady up here. It's fairly steady. It's going pretty well, really, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go back to doctor mode because it'd be good for um, emergency. Brad Rapp, Michael King, William Lee. Let's get some ladies in and I don't know you uh, and then we can try and make a dent in this objective of treating 20 patients in intern mode and we can try and get the treating 90 patients per day that would be really good really good it'll probably work out that we just get all of the doctors that aren't actually seeing people at the moment oh no here we go so Richard had leg contusion. He should count as one. Yes, he does. Thomas Taylor must have influenza B, so he just needs antivirals, and then he can go home. That's good. So what are we on? Fifty-six. Okay, so thirty-four more people. We can do this. We can do this. Maybe. Uh, Casey Taylor has got peptic ulcer disease. He needs proton pump inhibitors. So he needs to go over to general surgery. He might need to be hospitalised. I can't remember. Don't know. Richard Foster's got iron deficiency anemia. He needs some iron supplements. Richard, go and get a pint of Guinness in your local pub. Richard Foster here has got lactose intolerance. He needs to have a diet plan made for him. And hopefully that will help. William Martin. We've got lots of Martins, haven't we? Maybe Chris Martin, leader of Coldplay, has got a few friends that like to come to our hospital, maybe. Well, we'll be friends with them, they'll be family. Just ignore me. Um, Fraser Rodriguez has got bacterial gastroenteritis. So we need to be careful because that is quite a nasty thing to be diagnosed with. So, yeah. I'm going to put him on priority, actually. He's going to ICU. I think that's a good thing that he's going to the ICU because he needs to be looked after. Dana Hernandez, she's also got bacterial gastroenteritis. Maybe there's a little endemic going on who knows but we're doing well um then you can actually go home now so it's five quarter way there five out of twenty 
that's good then it's gone a bit quiet 64 five o'clock I think that's tight to treat 90 patients I think that will be quite tight Nancy Clark is collapsing right let's be fairly intelligent we know it must be pancreatitis because we haven't got these green departments so let's make sure she gets an IV infusion she is suffering from palpitations so we need to do something that's looking at Nancy's heart blood pressure have we got any we can't do any of these can we okay right so what else can be wrong with Nancy if she's got pancreatitis she could have abdominal pain didn't find that um, we didn't do store analysis still collecting weight loss tenderness tachycardia we need to do an ECG I think if we transfer her to ICU and unpause I think now because she's got ICU we can do an ECG we can do heart monitoring at least maybe an echo as well so we can't do ECG because we need the cardiography unit so maybe we need to get in a cardiography unit maybe that's our next little thing that we could do so we've got sonography up here from radiology I think this will be a good area to also have cardiography so we could do it we could do like the basic room prefab room cardiography and that would fit fairly nice like here could fit we need to go out one more I don't know if I want to go out by one more could have a corridor three there and it could go there so we could do one like there and it could be opposite each other hmm I'm gonna do that because I've got a little plan there's always a plan guys there's always a plan so let's get our wallpapers out this needs to be brick so we've got a decent amount of money at the moment if we go back around we're gonna transfer this for a door of a window we're gonna get our stickers out the front so cardiography which is this one goes on the left and room number one on the right and then what I'm going to do here is pop in some more toilets and if we need to expand if we need to get another cardiography room in the future we could put another cardiography room here maybe so Margaret's good let's just see these hidden things here so let's get Robert in the day because he's really good and then at night Jennifer's pretty good she's a slow learner but that's fine so there we go and I'm actually just gonna here what I'm gonna do is what is it how big is this space six so we can have it like that door here two doors and then we do hmm isn't it quite awkward sized restrooms aren't they okay okay I got to plan we should have to do a few of these smaller ones copy that just because it does the stickers for us on the outside then we'll just delete that bit and then we can copy that and there we go so it's got some nice bathrooms here just to make sure that everyone's got somewhere to go because when you've got to go you've got to go restroom 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 corridor comes here this waiting room comes here and that's all one waiting room please right let us get out a few more benches like that and maybe like a little bin now what I'm actually going to do is get out a vending machine and a water dispenser. Cool. 
Yes, I like, I like. Okay, have we got cleaning stuff for radiology? No. Okay. No cleaning stuff for radiology. What about if we came down here? Got rid of this. And then made this a little cleaning closet for radiology. What do we think of that? Done that. Yeah, that could be that wall, that's fine. Restricted access, because we don't want people coming in here and drinking bleach, do we? We do not want people in our hospital drinking bleach. That would not be good for our reputation. Uh, this poster can just live outside. Shelf, a couple of bucket carts, then like a trash bin in the corner, and a lab sink in this corner. That's a nice little room. That's quite nice. And then some janitors. Right. Patricia's really good. She doesn't take free time breaks, so she'll be quite tired a lot of the time. But that's fine. James Hall. What a gift of a janitor. Efficient at night and moves really fast. You're in. I think one day, one night will be fine for the moment. Oh my god, it's gone all gone crazy. Right, let's go and see Jessica. Right, okay. So, you've got H. pylori, Helicobacter. Oh, I've done a project on Helicobacter hepaticus in my first year at uni, guys. I did, I did. It was a banging poster. It was a good poster. So, Helicobacter. I know you all too well. You need triple therapy treatment. Let's get that done. Again, don't know if you have to be hospitalized. It looks like required room, ICU slash office slash diagnostic unit. So I think if you're hospitalized, you can get it in the ICU or diagnostic unit. If you're a clinic patient, you should be able to get it in a doctor's office, I think. I think that means you do not have to be hospitalized. No, go one speed, let's chill a bit, let's chill. Okay, okay, I think I've been recording for quite a while. I am going to cut this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. I feel energised today, so sorry if I've made some really poor jokes. That's what happens when I'm energised. But we've got a little cleaning closet down here. Oh, look at these windows. Sorry guys if you've noticed that. Probably screaming at me, sorry. We've got a nice little cleaning closet. We've got in. Our own member of doctor staff, Brad Rad. Let me know if you want to be a member of staff in the hospital, by the way. No problem. What else have we done? We've treated a few patients over here in observation. We've treated a few patients over here in emergency. We've um, expanded HCU. We've done a few bits up here in general surgery. We've, what else have we done? Oh, we've got in cardiography and some more toilets. We've done well, we've done well. Guys, I'm going to see you in the next episode, which will be coming out very shortly. I hope you enjoyed it. Any suggestions, feedback, let me know down below in the comments. And I will see you later. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel down below if you haven't done so already. And please feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Have a great day. See you later.